So today's video is about my approach to songwriting. It's definitely not about being a pro musician. The world channel is for the hobby type of guitarist looking for what to create own stuff in metal. So here are my eight steps for songwriting in the probably most short way to explain a science. And if you like, hit that subscribe button. At first you need an inspiration. For me, most of the ideas I get from YouTube by just hearing favorite bands. But also unconventional stuff out of my comfort zone to have a wider influence. I especially like bands dealing with some rhythmical stuff to maybe find a new approach to a song. Having an idea, I start to noodle around with the guitar. And yeah, to find riffs is also a theme of practicing like speed or techniques. The more often you practice riff writing, the more quickly you will come and find new ideas. And when I'm stuck at a certain point, I just open Easy Drummer and jam to a groove. God bless the search function of that VST. What also really works for me is using some unconventional software. I can advise you Easy Keys, a VST. Uh, from Toontrack because there you can choose between different chord progressions until you find a decent one. And then you can get more complex with your guitar. Another VST I can definitely advise you is Arcade from Output. It's a kind of a loop station filled with a huge amount of different type of music and I'm using it for my symphonic metal stuff for example. I can noodle around with some classic pieces like Mozart and try to go with that theme uh, with my guitar and lay a drum pattern over it. Et voila, symphonic metal was born. Once having an idea and a rough song structure, I usually start working out a melodic flow over the whole song before I add drums, bass and so on. Of course you can have it your way, it's just my way to go with. It's not necessarily the best way. At this point it's getting really hard for me, because being the bedroom type of player and not a pro recording can be really tough and time consuming for me, especially for a try and error principle of melody creating. So I switch mainly between two ways, guitar riffing and programming. Of course everything should be played on your guitar, but to change little things afterwards, programming MIDI in Guitar Pro or Shreddage can be more time efficient. Last one is a really great way for me to write solos for example. I program the MIDI, I work it out till I find the flow and then learn the solo with the guitar afterwards. Shreddage for example gives me additional an option to choose between different tones, finger sets and so on. Of course tone quality is another world than playing through a real amp like Angle or so but this way I'm getting much easier and quicker to a decent result. Having a song structure and a melodic flow over the song, I work out the drums. I only use Easy Drummer 2 or VST in general, because I'm obviously not a drummer. Easy Drummer is filled with hundreds of grooves and so I can drag and drop a pleasant one really quickly and uh, there's a special function, the search function, there you can program a sound in your mind and Easy Drummer searches for the most fitting drum groove. And having one over the wall song, I focus more on fills. For example, after every two bars I add one, because I want to have more of this type of an organic flow instead of a generic one. Next step, bass. Unfortunately, I don't have one since I quitted my band. But that's not a problem, because I got help from my DAW Reaper. There's a pitch shifter included and now quickly playing the bass line with my guitar, then pitching down an octave and straight into STL Tone Forgeable Partner. Awesome BST. It includes a ton of tones for guitar and bass and also some album tones. And yes, you might think this is cheating and yes, this is cheating, but doesn't care if the result is great. Now it's getting tricky. Editing is really time consuming but worth it. At first I tweak out a decent tone for guitar and bass. For the guitars I sometimes switch between reamping digital and analog with my Engel Fireball because I want to have a really good sounding tone from the source. When I'm done with tweaking, I focus more on having the transients of bass and guitar at the same time. Then I figure out if the kick drum supports that punch and everything glues together. Here an example without editing transients. And here the edited one. In mixing I focus on automizations. For example, every time kick drum hits the bass is ducking. It sounds a lot more transparent. Same with the snare and the vocals. Then I play around with the volume of the tracks to build up more dynamic. 
At the end, I filled out every sizzling noises and stuff I don't like with some multiband uh, compression and equalizing. The goal is to have a mix at the end that is decent to me. So last step in mastering is just complementing everything. Last step is mastering. If the mix doesn't sound good so far, mastering won't rescue it. So spend time in the steps before they are worth it. For me, the following chain is working. EQ for a general adjustment. Exciters at 250 hertz for a beefy punch and on 2000 for a more high definition sound, for more clarity, then a multiband compressor to control low mids and sub frequencies, a stereo enhancer for wideness, another compressor that builds up a boomy pump effect, especially with chugging guitars, then a brick wall limiter to adjust volume and a master limiter that pushes the low end and a little bit controls it at the same time. So, this was my workflow from an idea to a finished song. Of course, no professional material, it's for bedroom players as me. I'm playing just two, three years, but I'm quite satisfied with my work. I hope you liked it. If so, please subscribe. Wish you all the best. Keep going. Yeah.